to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's sing a song, The More That I Surrender, The Lighter I Load. Oh, and the more that I surrender, the lighter my load. The more that I release myself,
Psalm, great are you, Lord, great are you, Lord. He's great to us, isn't he? You give life, you are love, you bring life. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken.
he's so great to us this morning, isn't he? That he would fill our lungs with breath of life. Amen. Do you love him this morning? Amen. Let's just go to the prayer request this morning. I want to continue to lift up our sister Deborah Watson, that God would just touch her body and strengthen her. I want to continue to lift up our brother Donnie Nicholson, brother Joe Shiflett, sister Erica Parker, brother Randy Hinkle. I want to continue to lift up our pastor, brother Ron, this morning as he would speak the word of life to us. I want to be remembering the ones that are out sick this weekend and dealing with uh, stomach bug or flu-like symptoms. So we'll just be praying for them. Amen. How many would have an unspoken request you'd like to lift up to the Lord this morning? Amen. I'm asking our brother Shannon Shiflett if he would come this morning and just pray over these needs for us. Let us bow our hearts. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, with thanks, Father, we come and gather today with hungry hearts, Lord, for more, Lord, of what you poured out on us last night. Father, we've come back this morning just longing for more because, Lord, there's just something about being in your presence that we so love. Oh, God, one moment in your presence, it changes a person's life. Lord, the moment we've come into your presence, we've never been the same. We're so grateful for these things. We're so grateful for the grace and the mercy that you give us daily, Lord. Many things you do, Father, that go unsaid. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We've lifted up our hands, Father. We sing the songs of Zion this morning, Lord. And may every hand that has went up, Lord, may it be an acceptable sacrifice. I pray that God for every hand lifted, may you not only bless that soul, but the home, Lord, the whole household of that hand, Lord, that goes up. Father, we've come today to worship you for there's a love in our heart, Lord, for you are worthy. You're worthy of the praise. You're worthy of the songs, Lord, the testimonies, Lord, you're so good. Father, we lift you up with all of our hearts, oh God. Lord, our loved ones that are sick, these prayers that have come before you. Lord, we place them in your hands. You're our healer, Lord. You're the deliverer, the savior. For those that are taking those treatments, Lord, and that cancer, I pray, Father, for strength, energy, and health. I pray for a testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that they be made whole, Lord. Father, for those that are sick with flu or COVID or that, that respiratory, Lord, may you touch their bodies, Lord Jesus. My brother Stephen, home with the flu. Lord, may you go by his way today. Lord, may you touch his body and may you keep it from Sister Tara Byers, Lord. Lord, the needs that are the lifted hands that went up that are unspoken. Father, there's not a need on our heart that you're not aware of, Lord. May you meet each one. Father, our pastor that's going to come forth with the word today, may you anoint him with the fire of the Holy Ghost, Lord. May those words come forth this morning, Lord. May they fall on receiving hearts again, O oh God. Lord, bless this service. I pray that you would have your will and way here today, Lord. And as the service goes on, O oh God, may you walk by each one. May you raise the faith up in us, Lord, that we may reach out and touch the hem of your garment today, Lord. These things we ask and pray in your wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. this time we'll receive this morning's offering. Maybe Brother Fred Perry, you come sing for us this morning if you would. Then we'll have Sister Rebecca Borlevon, if she'd sing for us this morning. Amen. Then we'll have Brother Stephen come sing for us. Amen. You give as God's blessed you. And after you've given, you can be seated this morning. guys pray for me. I get nervous around the crowd. Uh, I, don't know. I guess I'm going to sing the song I've been singing for a couple weeks now. Now Jesus came to the apostles' chair. 
And though they feared for spirit, they think. But Jesus cried, fear not, it's I. Come walk on the water, oh, by my side. And I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Although the winds are contrary and the sea is against me, I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Now little David was a ruddy boy, sent to feed his brothers at war. But when Goliath defiled his Lord, off come his head with his own sword. I'm gonna walk on the water with my Lord. I'm gonna walk on the water with my Lord. Although the winds are contrary and the sea is against me. I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Now remember Sister Hattie Rye, the words she spoke, oh, they were right. Oh, it pleased the Lord and all we'll see. For with her sons, she'll spend eternity. And I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Oh, I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Although the winds are contrary and the sea is against me, I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Now read your Bible. Till you understand that Ron Spencer is a holiness man. When the devil came with an evil plan, God said, hold on, well, that's my man. And I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Oh, I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Although the winds are contrary and the sea is against me, I'm gonna walk on the water with my Lord. Well, it rained 40 days and it rained 40 nights. Noah drifted on the water high. By God's holy hand, then Noah walked out on dry land. Oh, I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Oh, I'm going to walk on the water with my Lord. Oh, though the winds are contrary and the sea is against me. I'm going to walk on the water with my
He promised to hold my hand. He promised to help me stand. When the valley's too low and the river's too wide, He promised He would lead me to the other side. His promises light my way. Never lead my feet to stray. Living in His Word, I will overcome. Standing on His promises one by one. And I may have to walk through the valley of death, but I may not be sure of my very next step. Promise to to help me stand when the valley's too low and the river's too wide he promised he would lead me to the other side his promises light my way never lead my feet to stray living in his word to hold my hand. He promised to help me stand. When the valley's too low and the river's too wide, He promised He would lead me to the other side. His promises light my way. Never lead my feet to stray. Living to help me stand when the valley's too low and the river's too wide he promised he would lead me to the other side his promises by my way never lead my feet to stray living in his word
feels like I've been down to the river. You washed away all my shame. No longer bound because I'm forgiven. I've been made free from sin's guilty stain. You gave your life for me that I might be saved. You changed my destiny with the awesome price you paid. Now I can say, oh, found my life in you all things are new i'm not the same yes i've been changed my mind's renewed no longer a sinner got power to walk like a winner. Oh, though I may fail, you still call me your own. You gave your life for me that I might be saved. You changed my destiny some price you paid now I can say old things are passed away all things are new I'm not the same yes I've been changed yes it's true I found my life in you all things are new Yes, I've been changed since he changed me. I'll never be the same. He changed me and I'll never Oh, I 
I'm not the same. Amen. Aren't you glad that you've been changed? Amen. Let's stand at this time. Let's sing a song. I feel Jesus in the room. I feel Jesus in the room. I feel, I feel, I feel Jesus in the room. I feel Jesus in the room. I feel Jesus in. Maybe 
let's sing that again. I'm free. And I'm free. Are you healed in his presence? And I'm healed. Oh, in his presence. Oh, life for me. No, I'm not the same. Oh, life changed in the presence. Oh, there's nothing like the presence. Oh, there's nothing like the presence. Oh, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like the presence. Oh, there's nothing like the presence. Aren't you glad he's in the room? Amen. Amen. I'm glad you're in the room too. Amen. So good to see you this morning and what a great day to be alive. And Amen. So good to see each and every one of you and those that are out sick, we sure are praying for them as well. And Amen. Nobody, nobody wants to be sick and so, amen. So I want to remember them in prayer. Last night was awesome. Amen. I release I re-listened to it last night and I got up this morning and I listened to it again and Amen. It was just great. And, amen. I thought, well, maybe we'll just have him preach again this morning. And so Amen. Certainly enjoyed that, Andrew. The effect afterwards was incredible. And so amen. Jesus comes to the room and he changes our lives. And Amen. Isn't it good to be here? Brother Paul, Sister Rochelle, when are you guys headed to Brazil? Wednesday. I'd like to pray for you guys if you guys have come down. And I'd like to pray. They're headed to Brazil. Brother Fabroni, I believe, is. And uh, amen. Amen. You please take our love to them. And amen. Amen. That's home for them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Amen. Lord Jesus, as Paul and Rochelle goes to. Brazil, her home, for meetings there and a homecoming of sorts. I ask you that you would watch over their trip. May you be completely in the arrangements, Father. Thank you that they have called this place home now. They blessed us with their presence. And as they go to and from, I pray that the meeting would be blessed there. Lord, may they see a a real change in their lives. 
Lord, when you come to our lives, it makes all the difference. I pray that you'd watch over them. Be with them, Lord Jesus, in the time of promise. Help us, dear God, this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Paul. We love you. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. Tell them hello. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So love you this morning. So good to see you. Amen. Isn't he good to us? Amen. Hallelujah. How many heard Wesley last night quoting a word back? And, and that's a little fellow that couldn't walk. Amen. And so when you hear him quote the word back, don't, don't you let that bother you. That ought to inspire us today. And amen. We so enjoyed that last night. We were talking around the table this morning and how much we so enjoy that. And so Amen. We love the Lord for what he has done and what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Not making the full full announcement, but I'd like to see you at 345 at our arranged place this afternoon. If you didn't get your text this morning, tell your neighbor, said, I didn't get the text. Tell me where we're going. So, amen. And one day we're going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I think about a dinner like this. This is for us. It's for us. And I know sometimes people say, well, well I want you to include this one and that one. Well, you see, we're, we have an arranged dinner at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it's only going to be for us. No extra seats. I have a place there. And I'll look across, and there you'll be. And maybe it won't be a lot of talking going on, but we'll, we'll say, thank the Lord we made it. Thank the Lord we made it. Amen and amen. God bless you. If you'll turn with me in your scriptures this morning. Luke chapter 11 and verse 17. I'd like to continue the thought of no fault. And I'd like to look today at two books. Every one of us have two books. Amen. There was an old and there was a new. That was awesome. Amen. Luke chapter 11 and verse 17. Brother Stephen has already sung my sermon. Now I'm going to preach it to you. Jesus now. But he knowing their thoughts, what a statement right there. But he knowing their thoughts said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub? But if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Quite a powerful twist. Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come unto him and overcometh him, he taketh from him all of his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Notice these next verses. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places and seeketh rest and findeth none. 
And he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it sweat and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last estate of that man is worse than the first. That is why we must have the Holy Ghost. You have a need this morning. I'd like to just, if you just lift your hands before the Lord and let's just take it to God and say, Lord, come by and meet my needs. Heavenly Father, we love you with all of our hearts. We have already felt Jesus in the room this morning. What a day that lays before us as sons and daughters of God. Lord, we ask you to come by and touch every need, touch every heart, touch the sickness of the people that have been sick this week and those that, are, that are, have great needs and are at home. We ask you that you'd stretch forth your hand of mercy. And we pray this upon the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's have church. Amen. amen. You can be seated. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8 and verse, verse 1, Verse chapter 7 talks about it divorced from our first nature. Talks about the old man being dead. But in the next sermon or the next chapter he preaches and he starts out with this sentence. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Isn't it wonderful? I read this the other day and I thought it was good and I'll bring it to you. During the national observance of the 100th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, I was, I was stuck, struck by the great emphasis of a number of immigrants who had often left their behind, their country behind, coming to America with nothing but their clothes on their back. They risked their lives for something that they valued more highly than everything that they left behind, freedom. They did not take their adopted country's hard-won freedom for granted, neither do, must we. Their experience is a picture of what we must do when we come to Jesus Christ. We must for, forsake our alliance to this world and its allegiance. Leave behind all that it offers and become citizens of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the Statue of Liberty is in the form of a cross. The statue on New York Harbor lifts up her lamps beside of a golden door. The Statue of Liberty on that hill called Jerusalem lights up our way to eternal life. Hallelujah. We today stand here as redeemed. We are not what we were. We are not identified with the old nature anymore. We have become divorced from that nature, we have become changed, and we stand here as new creatures in Christ Jesus. Many times we look like the same fellow that sinned and did all those evil things while we were alienated from the commonwealth of God. That though now we are maybe grayer in our head, our shoulders are a little bit more stooped, our walk, our gait is a little bit slower, but there's a new king that's living on the inside of our heart. Our tongue doesn't speak the same. Our mind doesn't speak the same. Say, think the same. Our eyes don't look at things that we used to look at. Our feet don't carry us to bar rooms and dances and all different kind of things of the world, but it carries us to church. We become leaders in our homes. Women become real pastors there to where they teach their children the things of God. Children grow up in an environment not of drinking and cussing and fighting with moms and dads, but they grow up in a home of prayer. 
They grow up in a home of an environment of peace. When they go to school, they hear of families that have great difficulties. We're not those families. But if those families had Jesus, you see, the difference is more than just a message. The message is Jesus Christ revealed. It's more than books and tapes, pictures on the wall, but it's a tabernacle of the Holy Ghost living inside of our lives. Jeremiah says in chapter 1 and verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. It was more than just Jeremiah. But God watched over you in your mother's womb. He watched over you all the way from Adam and protected your seed. And if he could do that for thousands of years, how much more can he help you today? Jesus is preaching to Nicodemus. Nicodemus being a secret believer, the scripture says in verse 2 of chapter 3 of John, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now Jesus turns. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of God. God strictly spells out in several different places of the scriptures. There will be no idolaters in heaven. There will be no fornicators in heaven. There will be no murderers in heaven. There will be none of those kind. What a place that that's going to be like. There'll be no lying. There'll be no cheating. There'll be no stealing in heaven. There'll be no adultery in heaven. There'll be no murders in heaven. There'll not be a hospital there. There'll be no need for a courtroom. There will be no jail cells there. What a place. Why wouldn't you want to go to a place like that? Luke chapter 14 and verse 16. Then saith unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent, sent servants at supper time to say to him that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they were all with one consent began to make excuse. These people were qualified. Jesus is making an, an analogy of going to heaven. These people were qualified, but they made excuses. There will be people that are more smart than you, better looking than you, have greater educations than you, have more money. But they made excuses. Why not to serve God? <laughs> and the first said, I had bought a piece of ground. And I must needs go see it, and I pray thee have me excuse. And another said, I bought a five oxen, yoke of oxen, and I must go prove them, and I pray thee have me excuse. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring them hither to the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. He found us. He found us. In many cases, we weren't qualified. Hallelujah. Brother Ray, he found us. He found we were at, and he gathered us to the table. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said, Go you into highways and hedges, compel them to come, that my house may be filled. And I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Let's just look at it just for a moment. With the woman at the well, 
be qualified in many of the circles of the Pharisees and the Sadducee? I dare not. The woman that washes Jesus' feet, I dare say not. A, a naked preacher cursing, using blasphemous names that will, 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 will literally try to cut a man's head off with a sword. I'd say he wouldn't be welcome in the circles of the Pharisees or the Sadducees because in their circles they wouldn't be qualified. <laughs> Hallelujah. Watch this. But you're just... But you're just then getting in condition to find Jesus. He's talking about Zacchaeus. He said, when you lose that reputation that you think that is so high and so classy and everything, you're just about getting ready to find Jesus. When you get that starch that has been taken out of you, that is when you're getting ready to find Jesus. Zacchaeus said, I'll, I'll get up in that tree before somebody else comes. So he climbs and twists and he gets up in the tree and finally gets up there. No, that limb won't hold me. And he looks there for two limbs to meet. And he comes to a place right there is the place where it meet me, a good solid place. That's the place where you sit. That's the way it meets you, yours and God. That's where your change comes. And he sits down on the limb sitting there, Garbage stink all over him. Splinters in his hands. A businessman of the city. Zacchaeus, a great man, but he's determined to see Jesus. But he's determined to see Jesus. God can get you into some horrible shape sometimes, but if you can get away, get determined to see Jesus, you'll see him. And sometimes we come with a lot of garbage on us. We got a history to us. The prophet says here some time ago, they had the religions of the world to meet. He said, I was reading it in a book. They had this little lady, Maccabee of, from Oklahoma, that was arrested out there. Might have been Tulsa or one of those places She's running through the streets, driving stagecoaches, smoking a cigar, breaking the speed limits with a stagecoach. And all the religions of the world raised up and told their part of their religion and how great it was. The Muhammad priest told how great his religion was. Buddha told how great his religion was. A certain minister, I can't call his name now, was representing the religion of America, Christian church. When he got up in time for his platform, he told the story of this great foul woman, how low down that she was. Now she couldn't want, nobody wanted her to be around her. To even get so close to her, they would tar and feather her. She was immoral. She was so degraded. There's nothing that could help her. And he said, gentlemen of the religions of this world and what your religions can produce, can anything that you've got cleanse the hands of this vile person? Everybody sat tight sat still right on the ends of their seats. No one said nothing. Then jumping up in the air, screaming and kicking his heels backwards and forwards, he said, the blood of Jesus Christ won't only cleanse her hands, but it'll cleanse her heart and make her pure as a lily. The blood of our Jesus Christ takes away sin and cleanses us from all of our iniquity and makes us creatures of Christ Jesus. Nothing else will do it. Creeds won't do it. Former religion won't do it. Nothing else will make your play take its place. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Eve tried to hybrid the word. 
In the beginning, God told her the day you eat your, thereof, that day you die. She tried to breed it with knowledge that Satan gave her. And when she did, she lost that whole human race to the devil. When she tried to mix God's unadulterated word with knowledge, it doesn't come from knowledge of the world. It comes from the power of the Holy Ghost. It is not by power, it is not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's how God does it. God's word is the seed of eternal life, and you try to hybrid it. Let me just say this, when you try to polish God's word up and bring Hollywood into it, when you try to make it to where it will fit with the society of today, you hybrid it and take the life out of it. <clears throat> he said, that'll kill it. It won't mix no more like oil and water won't mix. It will not do it. They have never in all the way tried to find anything better than God's way of doing it. You know, they've never found a way better than for a chicken to be big born into this world than to peck its way out of its shell. We're country people. We understand that. If you, if you let him peck his way out, he'll live. If you try to break it and make it easier for him, he won't have the strength to live. It's the same way with the Holy Ghost birth. You got to die out to yourself. It's not by shaking a preacher's hand. It's not by joining a church. You'll go right back into the world the same you come, and you'll be nothing but a mixture. But when you die out to yourself, Brother Ron, but I never smoked, I never drank, I never done anything in the world. You're still as much. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You still need a new birth in your life where you pray till that old nature, that old self-will dies out. A real death to worry. That first king of your heart dies. And the new king Jesus comes and lives on the inside of your heart. I'm afraid too many lazy, soft-soaked, watered-down preachers want to soft-soap it so much until where there's no dying out anymore. That's why churches look like the world, walk like the world, talk like the world. But we need to die out to our own nature. Men of God, we must display a life, a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me just say this to you. It comes to a point to where you can say, from that time. That point where you met him. That anchor where something changed in your life. Every one of us will have a different experience. And there's no way for us to explain a supernatural experience of God. How did you get it? Well, I, I really can't explain it. It happened. He came. And when he came, it just changed my life. Maybe you're standing on the street of Victoria when your life gets changed. Maybe it's on a Wednesday night that your life gets changed. Maybe it's a Saturday night after a service last night, and you just know I'm not the same man no more. In a moment of his presence, it changes your life. Let me just say this to you, whether you're the banker, whether you're the lawyer, whether you're the king, you still need Jesus. Brother Brown goes down in Pig Alley, and he walks through, and he meets a man that's laying in a ditch. He's a drunk. And he began to ask him where it all started. And he said he started out with one little social drink. Now he's lost his job, he's lost his home, he's lost his family, and he finds himself in Pig Alley. That man was standing before eternal life. We don't have the end of that story, but he was standing before a chance at eternal life. Let me just say, don't miss your opportunity. 
don't miss your opportunity. In hell tonight, there are people that would love to take our places. The celebrities of hell would like to have one service like we're sitting in today. They would give it all up. Jesus had a rich young ruler come near him. He had a good home. Had a good family. You can listen to it in leadership. Brother Man said he had a good father that taught him business. Had a good mother that taught him the word of God. He had all the fundamentals down. But he came to the right source of eternal life. And when Jesus saw him, he loved him. Jesus loved him. But he told him and told him, said, sell all that you have and give it into the poor and come follow me. That was too much. That was too much. How many people have sat in our churches all across the world? And because of the rigidity of the life, I don't find it hard, but a lot of people find walking this way difficult. But I want you to understand, well, Brother Ron, but it's difficult to dress like the sisters dress. Well, I don't dress like the sisters. But they become ladies, ladies of society, real queens walking on the earth. No, we don't have to make our sisters. We're not reformers. Wesley and them were reformers. They had to reform, but we're transformers. We preach the word and the word transforms your life. Listen, it's easy when you get Jesus. It's easy, it changes your music, it changes your lifestyle, it changes what you watch. Changes the friends that you're with. Well, Brother Ron, I'm afraid I'll lose my friends. Listen, they're not your friends. If they're leading you to hell, they're not your friends. When the money runs out, you'll find out who your friends are. When you're no longer supplying the drugs, you'll find out who your friends are. When you're no longer drinking their booze, you'll find out who your friends are. A little girl was carrying her Bible into school. The biggest bully of the school came up to her and was making fun of her. And she said, I believe that I have more power than you do. He laughed and made all manner of fun of her, and she said, carry this. Carry this. And that six-foot-six bully went to church where she went to. He was so drunk, he fell in the hedges. When he walked into the building of about 12 people, he found his way to Jesus Christ. That man become a real Christian. Let me just say this to you. When you find the real reason to live, I'm afraid we preach way too many funerals where people have never lived. They live 50, 60, 70 years, but they never lived. If you don't live for Jesus, you've never lived. I want to talk to you about when you came to the earth. Sometimes I don't think this is fair, but this God makes the rules. When you're born, you were born shaped in iniquity. The sins of your father was automatically on you. They were passed down from the generations, and all of their nonsense is now you're guilty of. Because you're born of sexual desire and sexual makings. And now the sins all the way since Adam through your heritage are, you're now guilty of. Let me explain it to you. If I'm going down the road and I'm doing 90 miles an hour. And the law pulls me over. 
and gives me a ticket, then my son is responsible to pay for it. I don't know who it would be. It doesn't seem fair that the bootleggers or the dope addicts of the family or the illegitimacy was pulled down into your life. Every family here had a lot of nonsense in your history. So don't put on no wings right here. Every one of you were born in sin. Every one of you had a past book in your life and there was a lot written down on the inside of there and we were guilty. We were guilty. And had we died in that condition, we would have went to a devil's hell. But God rich in mercy. God rich in mercy. It wasn't by your deeds. It wasn't by your goodness. Had a predestinated seed that he elected in you before the foundation of the world. It's kind of like a credit card. When God rich in mercy saves you, it doesn't give you the license to go back and sin. We're not making grace a disgrace. It's just like a $25,000 credit card bill. You'll never pay it off. You'll never pay it off just paying the little bit. That's the way the devil will do to you. Just try to reform yourself a little bit and just pay the minimum off. You'll never get it paid off. It's not designed that way. But somebody came and paid your debt for you. God left heaven's glory and came to the earth and died the sinner's death and God sent him to hell so you wouldn't have to go there. When God takes us through the Old Testament, when you think about the characters, the outstanding characters of the Old Testament, their names, their life, actually probably less is mentioned than is setting in this building. But would have Rahab been welcome in the local church? Would a, a murderer named Moses be welcome in the local church? Would have David that took his best friend's wife and had a child by and it caused death to come all through his family? What of Esther, who hid her identification that she was a Jew, been unwelcome at a lot of churches. God, who is rich in mercy, had a prophet to stand at an auction and bid on a harlot. And no doubt the critics stood there and said, look over there, the old preacher has come to the auction today. And he's not only here, but he's bidding on a harlot. But God sent him there to tell him what the church world was like. And that God had redemption for her. You ought to be preaching with me right now. You ought to be preaching with me right now. Aren't you glad that in our condition, God didn't look at what you were. He was looking at the seed that was on the inside of you. And it was like a deep calling to the deep. And there was a deep to respond to it. Mm.
Jesus turns to Simon Peter and he said, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. I'd like to say this to you. Satan would desire to have our young people. But we've made a declaration. You can't have them. But he says, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now, he's been with him. Help me. He's been with him for three years. Three and a half, possibly. Thank you. You would think that Peter's converting. Most people sitting in church for three and a half years, they assume that I'm converting. And Jesus said, you're not even converted yet. (laughs) Laying before this statement, Peter's going to deny the Lord thrice. He's going to use abominable cursing that would condemn him to hell. Stay with me now. He's going to grab a sword out of the enemy and try to cut his head off. And then Jesus is going to tell him, get behind me, Satan. Because God's got a plan. And then he takes that man's ear and puts it back on his head and heals the man. I don't know how that man can continue to be the critic of Jesus Christ. After you see a phenomenal miracle like that laying on the ground and he puts his ear back on him and he, and he still is a critic of Jesus Christ. Don't tell me, how can you? But Jesus didn't look at, he knew his future, but he didn't look at his mistakes. Aren't you glad tonight that when God looks at you, he don't look at your mistakes. He don't look at your failures. He looks at your sacrifice. That ought to be a unanimous hang on the chandelier moment. God don't look at my mistakes. God, don't look at my failures, past, present, and future. God looks at my lamb. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators or adulterers or idolaters or feminine or abusers of themselves with mankind. That's talking about Sodom if you really want to know nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extor- extortioners, or shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. I want you to say that statement with me. And such were some of you. Now look at your neighbor. And such were some of you. This time I want you to do it with your finger, with your, just like that right there. I, and such were some of you. You know what you did? You just pointed three fingers back at yourself. <laughs> Always remember when you're pointing your finger at somebody else, three of them are pointing back at you. You just outvoted yourself. Notice what he says. But ye are washed. Ye are justified. But ye are sanctified. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. Cause you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgment and do them. I want to just tell you this. With God we have a rigged jury. This is a completely rigged courtroom. 
Jesus Christ became our lawyer, our judge, and our jury. Let me just think about this just for a moment. What a difficulty that Satan must have. You know, let's just have a feel sorry for Satan moment. So, okay, well, let's just have a feel sorry for Satan moment. Then we're going to beat the fire out of him. So here is he's got all the history of your forefathers, and he's got it all written down. He's kept good records. And you've been a lot of nonsense in your life. And then one minute in his presence, in the presence of Jesus Christ, he takes all of that and erases it. And then God says, when the accuser of the brethren comes up to him, and he tells him all your faults and the failures, and God says, let me look at my book. And he looks through the blood of Jesus Christ, and he says, I don't see anything. And then Satan says, look at here. And Jesus says, look at here. And Satan turns the page and he says, look at here. And Jesus said, look at here. A man walked up to me in, the, in a funeral one time at the, at, the, at the graveside and he was standing there and he said, I heard you preach something wrong this morning, preacher. He said, you know, the almighty God can't find your sins. He said, he's God. He can remember everything. I said, huh? I said, do you want a God like that? Does your God remember all of your old nonsense? I backed up from him and I said, the woman that you've got standing beside of you, you're living with her. And I said, you've been divorced twice. I said, you better pray for a God that don't remember. And here you're telling me that I'm wrong. You better pray that you meet the God that I have that can take away your sins, that you're not guilty of your history. I don't want to know your history. Need a five-hour conference with you to you to tell me all the nonsense in your life and to take me through Ten Town Alley. All I want you to do is meet Jesus Christ, and I'm talking about meeting and dying out of your old nature and getting filled with the Holy Ghost and get washed by the water of the Word and get a changed and a sanctified and filled in Holy Ghost life. And you come under the new identification that I'm not that man or woman anymore. I've been changed. My identification is not there anymore. I am a new man in Christ Jesus. Give him glory. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Give him glory in the house of God. Give him praise. I've been changed. I've been washed. I'm not that man. I'm not that man anymore. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus today, whether you're here in the seen audience or in the unseen audience, won't you just let him come in your life? I'm not talking about a picture on a wall. I'm not talking about a storybook historical Jesus Christ. Our prophet would have been a murderer. 
if God would have permitted it. A man that could shoot holes with his, shot, with his gun. Literally, one shot after another shot. If God would have permitted, he'd have killed, he'd killed six boys. He'd have killed them. Standing and preaching. And the angel tells him, you'll have a trial tonight. And a man is making love to a mongoloid girl. And the angel said, do with him what you will. Brother Branham could have spoke him out of existence. But he said, I forgive you. He's in a little home. He's telling a story about squirrels. And a woman sitting across the room said, that's absolutely the truth, Brother Branham. Brother Chris right there, raise your hand, Brother Chris. Has the table where Brother Branham ate those squirrels at. He's actually got the table in his office. Came from Charlie Cox. This ain't some makeshift. You can't just make this stuff up. But from that table, Brother Branham goes back home and tells that woman that's literally living with her mother and father and has a sister who is an invalid, whom Brother Branham said, I prayed more prayers for than any other person. And when she responded, that's absolutely the truth. She stepped into the realm of the third pull. She stepped into a realm of the third pole. Remember the woman in Memphis? She spoke a storm into existence that Brother Branham would be there for her son dying. Amen. Brother Branham said she used the same power that Jesus spoke that storm out of existence. Amen. I got a point I want to drive here. And Hattie stepped into a realm. And he said, whatever you desire, whatever you can have it. She said, what do I ask for? You can have all the money. You're poor. You can have all the money. You can have different things he presented to her. And she spoke something into existence that was greater than all the third pull put together. Greater than a storm. Greater than Brother Branham's wife, tumor going away right before the doctor in a surgery. And she spoke spoken word eternity for her two boys. What about your children? What about your children? What about your children? You heard it last night. More than the voice of Andrew. More than the voice of your pastor. What about your situation? Written in the new book, the acts of God on the inside of you. Billy Andrews said, if there's only two boys in heaven, those two's going to be there. What about your children on the internet? What about your children? Adam and Eve could have had spoken word sons, but they stepped into the realm of sin, and they came by the fallen nature which put you under the first book. But what about the second book when we speak eternal life? It's what we're doing here this morning. We're speaking to sinful flesh and telling you, you don't have to stay that way no more. You can have Jesus. The same Jesus that lived in the prophet. Brother Ranham couldn't die for himself, but he could die to himself. Brother Ron, I'm still struggling with things in my life. Just give it to God. Just give it to God. Why don't we just pray just now? Lord Jesus, no doubt there's 90% Christians, real Christians, dedicated here. But to still the humanity wrestles. The spirit wrestles because Satan can work on two realms. He can work on flesh and he can work on spirit. Down on the inside, 
where Satan can't get to. A place about the size of a button. Eternal life lives there. And it controls our flesh and our spirit. Now maybe there's a warfare going on right now. Maybe by an uplifted hand, they could say, Brother Ron, remember me. Remember me. Oh, God. If we give it to Jesus, in the coming weeks we'll find things fall off of us. Almost unnoticeable. Our character changes. Our nature changes. I ask you to bless this audience. I ask you to touch their lives. We invite you. We invite you to touch our hearts today. You touched my heart last night. I've been walking this way a long time now. Forty years I've been serving you. Almost that length of time I've been preaching for you. I've seen some of the most incredible miracles that would ever happen to humanity. The greatest, the greatest one I know is the transformation of a soul. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Lord, we all need more of you this morning. Come and touch our lives. Minister to our needs today. In Jesus Christ's name. We give ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? Do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? Do you wish that you could see it all they knew? Oh, is all creation groaning? Is a new creation coming? glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst is it good that we remind ourselves of this is anyone worth is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seals and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, oh, who conquered the grave. He is David's fruit and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. the Father truly love us? Who oh, does 
God's Spirit move among us. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever in those He loves? And does our God intend to dwell again with us?
morning star Oh, and throughout eternity Well, I'm going to praise Him And forevermore say you are God every will bow down and say you are King so let's start right now why would we wait we can praise you now in victory just want to be with you I just want to be with you and King of glory feel this place I just want to be with you I just want to be with you oh yes the world will bow down and say you say you are key so let's start right now why would we wait we can praise you now in victory oh king of glory feel this place I just want be with you oh I just want to be with you and King of glory feel this place I just want to be with you oh I just want to be with you King of glory place I just want to be with you Lord I just want to be with you one more time King of glory lift your voices feel this place this morning Lord I just want to be with you so we'll sing hallelujah to you come again and we'll dance in your presence till you come again I'll just sing hallelujah till you come again and I'll dance in your presence till you come again just want to be with you, King of glory, King of glory, feel this place. Can you sing it to him one more time? It's just you and him in the room. King of glory, feel this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Let your word be born in the manger of my heart. Oh, let it live. Oh, let it start. Oh, live in 
inside this house of clay and mold it every day. Oh, let your word be born in the manger of my heart. It was a tiny, simple state.
from your heart worshiping you worshiping you and you make it easy Lord cause I'm so caught in adultery felt when he said look up where's all your accusers at he said I find no fault in you the one that had no faults in him was telling her there's no sin on you now go and sin no more can you imagine how the woman that come in there when nobody else would wash his feet when nobody else would make him feel welcome he didn't cast her out, but he welcomed her. And because she welcomed him with her worship, he bestowed upon her the blessing that she would be remembered throughout all generations. You are a people that have welcomed the Lord Jesus Christ. You have washed him, washed his feet with your tears. You poured out your oil. You poured out your praise. He has found no fault in you. 
Well, I say, can't nobody do me like Jesus, oh, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Well, can't nobody, oh, do me like Jesus, oh. Aren't you thankful to have a friend like Jesus? Aren't you thankful that he found no fault in you? Go ahead and give him a hand clap of praise. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful to us? This time we're going to let you be dismissed and let the choir stay in practice today. Reminder that the, the meal will be at 345 and they'd like us there at 345 no sooner but just make your way in into the restaurant there and we'll see you there and God bless you we'll have just a couple announcements before we get started and and then we'll just go forward and enjoy a day of fellowship and a time together and it's a time it's a season that we remember what our our Lord Jesus Christ did for us and uh, we certainly appreciate and we honor our Lord Jesus Christ and we recognize his birth in this world. We know it wasn't in this season, but it's a time where, where we remember that he came for us. And, and we're certainly thankful for his coming. Amen. And we're thankful he's not, in a, he's not in a manger today, but he's in the manger of our hearts. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you're dismissed today. Go in the name of the Lord. And we'll see you a little bit later today. God bless you as the choir stays. God bless you. Well, I woke up this morning, I woke up this morning with my mind, oh, say it on Jesus, oh, I woke up this morning with my mind, oh, say it on the Lord, oh, I woke up this morning with my mind. Say it on Jesus' hand.